Today we're going to be talking about Vue's new vapor mode and more broadly innovation versus maintenance in open source. What you see here, this big mess, is Vue's new vapor mode. If this looks confusing, don't worry, I'm writing a book for you. Go ahead and drop your email in this, there's a link in the description. I'm writing a book about tooling, it's going to teach you how to build your own framework, how this kind of things works, how you can build a dev server, and all those other tools you use, but you don't actually understand how they work under the hood. Without further ado, on to today's show. We're going to be talking about the new view vapor mode, what it is, why it's important, and how this plays into innovation versus maintenance. So just to clarify, what vapor mode is, is an alternative rendering strategy for Vue. Right now it uses a virtual DOM, uh, there's many other ways to render, uh, SolidJS and Svelte use something a little bit different, and that's kind of the direction Vue is heading with its new vapor mode. A quick shout out to Kevin Deng, as is often the case in open source, uh, a mysterious individual with an anime display picture has come along and done a whole heap of commits to Vue, uh, basically implementing a good chunk of vapor mode. It works really well, I've tried it out, and I'm going to show you how it works today, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the benefits. So let's go ahead and do that now. So basically, we want to make Vue faster. You might think, isn't Vue fast enough? No, it's not, it can always be faster. And performance comes in many shapes and sizes. This does not just mean rendering speed. It means things like bundle size, how big is your bundle, which impacts how fast it loads, and how fast the browser can pass to JavaScript. Of course, it includes rendering speed, but it also includes memory usage. Now, this is one of the downsides of the virtual DOM. You have a very large in-memory object, and this is going to cost you performance as well. And vapor mode is supposed to solve some of these problems. Just to talk a little bit more about bundle size first, let's go ahead and take a look at these very simple benchmarks I made. I created three brand new Hello World projects with Solid, Vue, and React. The final size is something like this. For Solid, we have six kilobytes, it is tiny, Vue is 53 kilobytes, and React is 142 kilobytes. There is a very big difference between the virtual DOM frameworks and one that does not use a virtual DOM. Uh, this is not necessarily linear, so let's take a look at how this actually works out. I have this very nice graph here from the Svelte repo, and Svelte is very similar. It doesn't use a virtual DOM. More of the runtime is loaded into each individual component. What this means is your initial bundle is small, but as your components or the number of components grows, the size of your bundle is going to increase until you reach an inflection point where you're now bigger or have a larger bundle than the virtual DOM frameworks. Uh, this is obviously going to be pretty difficult to predict, uh, and it turns out it's very hard to know which is better, which is why Vue is going to actually allow you to use both in one shot. You can actually use uh, the vapor mode incrementally on a component by component basis. It is possible the compiler could become very intelligent and choose the best strategy depending on the size and complexity of your application. Either way, what I'm trying to say is these numbers are not linear and this is not the be all and end all of bundle size benchmarks. So talk a little bit more about vapor mode and how this works. And then we're going to talk about the virtual DOM strategy and how this plays into general balance versus maintenance. Going to head over to here, here to a forked version of Vue. This has vapor mode. You can turn it on and off up here and compare the two. We're going to take a look at the default one right now, which is the virtual DOM rendering strategy. We have a very simple component over here, which is compiled into this JavaScript mess over here. Uh, this is actually very easy to read once you understand what's happening under the hood, which is what I'm hoping to teach you in my book. Definitely should check this one out. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. We have two nodes over here, H1 with a message and input with a V model. Whenever this changes, we're going to update the H1. And the way this works right now in Vue is by using a virtual DOM. It's going to go ahead and create these V nodes, uh, one for each of the nodes, the H1 and the input. Whenever on update model value is called, it's going to go ahead and trigger a change. The virtual DOM is going to reconcile that change, figure out what needs to happen, and then go ahead and re-render the, the element. Uh, this does work and is very quick, uh, but there are costs. Obviously, the larger the virtual DOM, the more memory it's going to take, and the diff is also going to take longer as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at vapor mode and see how that works instead. We can see it is a little bit different here. Let's go ahead and quickly run through it. Uh, instead of having virtual DOM, we have this template function, which presumably takes this string and turns it into whatever representation, probably just some DOM nodes with some metadata. We grab a reference to the node zero, which is actually going to be a fragment. There's no root node here. And then we're going to destructure out the children. We have N1, which is the H1, and we have N2, which is going to be the input. Uh, we still have our directives with V model. When we go ahead and N2 is updated, it's going to go ahead and set the new message value. We call render effect and call set text which is presumably just going to operate directly on the, the actual DOM, which is going to be nice and fast and not require any virtual DOM overhead. 
Uh, the size of the code here is quite similar actually. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out with larger, more complex components. Uh, but that's the gist of how this is going to work. So we've got to ask ourselves, is this really just free? Is everything better out of the box with vapor mode? And the answer is of course not. Uh, the main change we talked about earlier is this graph over here. I think depending on how you write your components and your application, maybe the bundle could be slightly larger, but you may still have better or worse performance. You always have to benchmark this stuff to really get an idea of how everything is going to work. Uh, but either way, I'm very excited for the vapor mode to see how everything plays out. We have to ask ourselves what happens with the virtual dorm strategy. Is the view team going to maintain both? That sounds like quite a lot of work. And we're seeing this dilemma in both React and Vue right now. We can go ahead and take a look over here at the Vue repo. There's like almost 700 issues and 300 PRs. Uh, the quality of these is definitely debatable. Some of these are probably real bugs. Some of them are probably duplicates. Some of them are probably people just asking for help. Uh, it's probably the same story over here with React. But either way, it is very hard to balance this development of innovation versus maintenance. If we take a look at React, for example, the last solid uh, major release was almost two years ago. Since then, they've been innovating heavily with things like server components and Next.js. And I think this lack of uh, maybe more stable releases in terms of innovation is actually starting to harm the community at least somewhat. I think some people are a little bit frustrated with how complex Next.js is coming and how React has not seen any updates itself. Uh, but this innovation is actually, in my opinion, very, very important. And here's why. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at some frameworks that didn't innovate, we can see those are basically obsolete now. An example would be Backbone.js. Uh, this was a good framework and it probably still does exactly what it's supposed to do, but it was kind of considered to be completed by the author and received no updates or innovation. And over time, Backbone has basically become irrelevant for this reason. Uh, so this is why innovation is important. It helps us push our tools forward and ultimately build better things for the web. Uh, my only concern with this sort of innovation is how it balances out with the teams. Most of these applications or these libraries are built by small teams of often volunteers uh, who are not paid and have to triage issues, handle pull requests and all that sort of thing over time. Uh, I am still very excited for the Vue Vapor strategy, but I hope that the team is able to balance the maintenance uh, with their existing strategy as well as all the other things on their plates as well. Either way, innovation is always good to see and I'm very excited for the future. That's all I've got for you today and I will see you in the next video.